A lot of times students ask me if a particular lesson is going to be easy or if it's going to be um, difficult. And when you're solving exponential equations, I'm going to say that it's not supposed to be challenging, but if you're not that good with your mad spam rules, the less the rules from I think it was 6.2, um, then this is going to be a little on the challenging side. So you have to know that when you are multiplying, you add the exponents. When you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. And when you have parentheses, you multiply the exponents. When you're solving an exponential equation, do what is necessary to make the bases the same. Once the bases are the same, you can set the exponents equal to each other. So if, two, if you have an equation, which is when two sides are equal to each other, um, and they have the same base, then that must mean that in order for them to be equal, like the equation says, they must have the same exponent. So if you look at example A, 5 to the x equals 125, you might know what x is, but I'm going to show you how you can do it if you're not sure what x is. And again, you can do trial and error, but I'm going to show you the more advanced way of doing it. If you make them both have the same base, then you can set the exponents equal to each other. So, for example, this has a base of 5, and this is 121 to the first power, right? So if there is no exponent, it's a 1. So the base here is 5, and the base here is 125. But if you know, if you do a practice with your um, exponents, you'll know that you can turn 125 into 5 to the something, right? 125 is the same as 5 to the third. So I can rewrite this equation and say 5 to the x is equal to 5 to the third. And if the equation is true and the bases are the same, 5 to the x is the same as 5 to the third, then the only way for them to be equal is if x equals 3, right? Because other than 3, you're not going to get an equal statement. So that one um, is going to say x equals 3, and that's the only way that it could be a true equation. Over in letter B, we've got a little bit more advanced one, especially you see that exponent. I've got x minus 3 in the exponent spot on one side, and then 4 to the x on the other side. So I want to make the bases the same, and over here the base is 4, and over here the base is 2. So you look at the bases and you say, well, what base could I make so that they're both the same? So I'm going to say 4 is the same as 2 squared. So I'm rewriting 4 to the x as 2 squared to the x. And then I bring down the other half of the equation. So I've turned both of their bases into 2, right? So they both have a base of 2, and this says 2 squared to the x, and this says 2 to the x minus 3. So again, like I said earlier in the video, you have to know your mad spam rules because what do you do when you have a parentheses next to an exponent? Hopefully you said multiply. So 2 times x is 2x, and then you just bring down the other side. So the only way for this to be a true statement is if 2x equals x minus 3. And now then I make an equation for that and we'll solve for x. So I'm just going to ignore the base for the moment and take the exponents and solve for the variable in the exponents, and then I'll check to make sure that it's true. So when you do your inverses, I'm not going to show all the inverses, but when you do all your inverses, you should get x equals negative 3. But because these are more advanced, I want to make sure that I'm getting it correct. So I will check to make sure that I've done it right. Now the directions don't say to check, they just say to solve. But as you know, we want to always make sure that we get the right answer. And the best way to make sure that you get the right answer is to check your work. So I just like we've always done with check, I'm going to rewrite the original equation exactly how I found it. But instead of x, I'm going to put negative 3. Okay, so I've written the equation exactly how I found it. Um, and now I just have to do the math. So negative exponents mean to flip the fraction. So this becomes 1 over 4 to the third. And over here on this side, I'll do the subtraction. Negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. So 1 over 4 to the third is 1 over 64. And this becomes, oh, again, I got a negative fraction, so I'll flip it. 1 over 2 to the sixth. 
finished. So let's go. Let's, we just have one more step to do. 2 to the 6th is 64. So I can see that I get 1 over 64 on both sides. And so I know that x must be negative 3. Example C is a little more challenging because you can't turn 27 into 9 to the something because 9 to the nothing friendly is 27. But if you look at 9 and you look at 27, you can say, well, 9 is 3 squared and 27 is 3 to the third. So I have to change both bases in this example to 3. So I've rewritten this one as 3 squared to the x plus 2. And this one I've rewritten as 3 to the third to the x. So I'm not changing the exponents. The only thing I'm changing is the base. This becomes 3 squared, and this becomes 3 to the third. Now, when you do your mad spam rules, you have to be careful when you multiply, because when you're multiplying up here, you have to use the distributive property. So it's 2 times x plus 2 times 2. And then the other one becomes uh, 3 to the 3x. So again, I'm going to ignore the bases for the moment, and I'm just going to bring down the exponents and solve for the variable. So again, I'm taking the exponents and bringing them down, ignoring the base. I'm not going to show all the inverses for this, but when you do your inverses, you should get x equals 4. And then especially in the complex ones, I want to go back to the original equation and plug in 4 and make sure that it works. So this becomes 9 to the 6th equals 27 to the 4th. So I definitely have to grab my calculator for this one. I get 531,441 for the left. And I also got that for the right. So it checked as well. Okay, these six examples are for you. Pause the video. And uh, don't forget, you want to make sure that you check your solution, and I'll throw up the answers in a second. There are the first three. I just uh, need to scroll the screen up, so I'm going to pause here for a second. And there are the answers to the last three. Um, so what I want to talk about specifically is the answer to letter F. Um, because when you check it, you get some wacky um, looking thing in the calculator when you go to type in 100 to the 19.5. I definitely had to use my exponent key on that, um, that key that we talked about in another video, in an earlier video. So when I typed in 100 to the 19.5 exponent, I got something that looked like this. It said 1E39. E and what your calculator is doing is it is actually giving you scientific notation. It's saying 1 times 10 to the 39th. Um, this is how your calculator writes scientific notation. So if you ever see something with an E, it's talking in scientific notation. Um, and so I got 1 E39, and luckily I just got 1 E39, 1, to, 1 times 10 to the 39th for both of them. So um, you just want to be able to recognize scientific notation in your calculator so that way you can write it and understand what it's actually saying. Okay, so hopefully you did well. Um, if you have questions, um, ask me in class.